<laughs> yes. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Jamie, yeah. hello, Jamie. Well, I'll, I'll start off by saying hello, Jamie's kitchen. What a lovely kitchen. I think she's still trying to connect. Yeah, yeah that's what it looks like. So good morning, ladies. How are you today? All right. OK. <laughs> hey, Jamie. Hey, honey. Oh, my are you God. making us breakfast, all, all of us? <laughs> my wife. Are you making us breakfast this morning? I was drinking my enzymes. I did a live. I'm not awake yet. I don't know why. I did my lemon. <laughs> Where are you from originally? I'm from Chicago. Oh, you are? Okay. I was going to ask if you were from New York. I know everyone goes there first, but I'm actually from Chicago. Because your, your uh, accent sounds a little New York to me. Yeah. Well, I, I think am... her attitude is a New Yorker attitude, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll be from wherever. No one knows where I'm from or. You know, they're like, are you Greek? Are you Italian? Are you, I'm like, whatever. I'm from the tribe. I'm a member of the tribe. I'm MOT. <laughs> I'm a member of the tribe, yeah. For those of you who don't know what an MOT is, an MOT means she's Jewish. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. Some people, some people have never heard that expression. Yeah. I have, a, I have a friend, a very close friend who lives in Minnesota. And her husband's from Long Island, and she grew up with all these Jewish friends, and she calls herself an honorary MOT. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. She said, so much of it's rubbed off on me. She said, I can't tell if it's the Jewish part or if it's the New York part. Probably a little of both. That's right. It's exactly what I told her. So mm. anyway, thank you for getting up and... If you were getting up anyway, thank you for being here. I'm glad that we could do this again. Yeah, it's just a slippy slope for me because my dog usually goes out every day between 7.15 and 7.30. So I'm going to hang on as long as I can before she starts bothering me. Um, <laughs> okay. Before she comes down and cries. Cry, cry, cry. <laughs> so should we check in with everybody what's going on? Yeah. Go right ahead, whoever wants to go first. Did we lose anybody? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think they're, they're still going to show up because Helene said she's coming. Don't know about anyone else. But um, anyway, it's great. Let's see. You know, it's a, a the, with the business is kind of a slow week, but with the next week, with the holidays, I'm assuming people are busy or... They said that travel is back to what it was before COVID. So a lot of people um, are traveling, but uh, it gave me an opportunity. Actually, I was so proud of myself yesterday. I put together, um, what you call it, uh, Instagram carousel, like within a few minutes. Wow, that's yeah. great. Like I'm getting really, really good at it. Like with the genetic testing, they just came out with an amazing discount. They're giving $100 discount, which is massive. So I'm trying to promote all that. So I put together Instagram carousel. I put it on my website, on my page, created a quick thing. I put it on, um, I think, Google and um, Facebook. Yeah. So, and I released uh, the blog, um, newsletter, which had 30% open, which was awesome. That's huge. That's huge. Congratulations. I know. Usually it's like 2022, it was 30% open and the clicks were higher than ever was. What was your title? Because I'm um, sure that it actually was, so was, I included a neck pain relief uh, video. It's like one technique. I'm big on self-help techniques. That's what I want to teach to a lot of people. And so I put a one video for a self-help technique. So I put, you know, self-help technique, um, neck pain release technique. I love that. Yeah. And it's like an instant. You don't have to go anywhere else. You just click it and place. 
mm. with the mellow light. So that was, yeah. And no unsubscribers yet. I have to go back and check. So, but when I get on unsubscribers, I kind of dread to go and click on to see the report. You know, it's like, oh, it's like knowing, not knowing it's kind of like ignorance is a bliss sometimes because mm -hmm. I get all this like, okay, what numbers am I going to see? And then am I going to see unsubscribers? But and then when I see unsubscribers, I'm like, oh my God, they actually give a damn to unsubscribe. So that was kind of cool, but uh, that's, that's my thing. What's a carousel? It's when you, you know, when you see on Instagram, um, you see picture and then on a top right corner, you see like one of 10. That means you can scroll and there's 10 other pictures. Oh. That's carousel. Cool. And that's just hitting the plus sign, right? Like yes, add, another, add, add another, add another. Yeah. And you can go like I go on Canva and I just do create, um, create like an Instagram post and I do create carousel post. I don't know if it makes any difference, but you can sure just get the pictures. And um, yeah, it's really simple. So it's exciting. Great. For, good for you. Good, good for morning, you. Jim. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning. I apologize for being late. Um, and, uh, and for missing last week as well. It's nice to see everybody. Very nice. Nice to see you. Is that you. a poncho you're wearing? I am. Yeah, it's a poncho. I love it. It's, it's real. I'm not even sure where it's from, but I found it. It's a little chilly here, so I found it. And it covers a, covers a myriad of t-shirts and things like that. So <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what little bit chilly means. I'm always interested. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, don't even. Oh, yeah, it depends on where you are. Well, it's probably uh, 38 or something like that, I would be my guess, which is uh, with a little wind. So that's what makes it so uh, little. Chill. Oh, yeah, the wind is gross. Yeah. We're covered in snow this morning. Ooh. <laughs> I'm oh. just going to shut up and say nothing. <laughs> we got, uh, we got half a foot a foot of snow on monday and tuesday just in time for them to play um canada versus mexico world cup qualifying soccer uh -huh. so, yeah i think the mexicans were a little chilly so <laughs> the canadians scored a goal and jumped into the snowbank it was like a true like canadian moment right yeah. they had they i think 44 000 fans in the stand yeah. it was <laughs> only in edmonton <laughs> there we go that's a little uh, oh. Hi, Helen. Good to see you. Glad you're here. I missed you. I missed you I missed all. You <laughs> it's been weeks. So I finally finished all the work for clients in the field, which is unbelievable. Like we're mid-November and I was still building gardens with my team. And so now it's really interesting because I can close things and veer my business for like to work a hundred percent on DCA and the List Builder Society. That opens up like so much, right? Yeah. And it was really interesting because this, uh, you know, the last contract I did in the work in the field, it was a, a really a mind opening experience regarding my mental blocks because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the first time that I was hitting my goals for like my monthly goal I the financial goal I have been looking at it literally every day for three months and breaking it into you know bite size chunks so that I can try to hit that target every week or every day and it was up and down and then when I finally hit it in two weeks for a full month I felt so guilty about charging my customer this amount and it just seemed so insane because I you know I was working from home I'm heavily pregnant I can't dig gardens so I had a team of three people we were mm -hmm. five actually total but you know like I had two teams in parallel that were doing different jobs and 
So I think because I was not doing any of the physical labor and I was doing the CEO job only, I felt guilty getting <laughs> all that profit. Right? But I'm like, I better get used to it because this is my target for the digital course too. Mm-hmm. Like work on your blocks. I had to literally take a day and a half off to just work through my mental blocks and finally send the invoice to my customer. (laughs) But now it's done. I'm on the other side and I'm very happy and grateful and proud of myself. And now it it feels like I can, you know, I can see clearly. It gave me a break too away from the, from working on my digital course. I think I was so immersed in it and working hard at it. It was a good it was good to have a break. Now I see the, I see the strategy, you know, to get there. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to, it'll be interesting in the next two weeks, like how much I can get done and like work on my email list in parallel. So I'm thinking like two half days a week on the list builder society and the rest of the week on DCA. So it should be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Congratulations. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Wow. I love how she just said it only took her a day and a half to get rid of all her blocks. Sign <laughs> me up for whatever you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> how about trying for years and still working at it? That's right. <laughs> for the blocks. Ah. Uh huh. You know what I did? I have two little piece of card, you know, papers. One of them has my three main goals, and the other one has my three top fears. And so I'm they're in front of my laptop. I see them first thing in the morning when I wake up and all day when I work. And um, as I was looking at my top three fears, like one of them was not being able to adapt, and I'm like, obviously that is one of my strengths being able to adapt it's ridiculous that's it's one of my top three fears scribe that off you know and it's like every it just helps me stay focused Mm -hmm. on those things and I guess if you put enough time every day and enough days like every day of the week you're you're staring at them and focusing on them eventually they start looking pretty ridiculous you know (laughs) and that helps me you know shatter the glass ceilings when are you due very soon (laughs) december 26th yeah 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 very soon whoa mama (laughs) yeah the 26th is my due date And I'm pre-selling, I'm doing my founding member pre-sale on December 6th. Did you hire someone to help you with that? Do you have like a virtual assistant or someone to help you? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's been working with me for almost since the beginning when I launched my business. Yes, absolutely. Do you, can you share who it is or how, you know, I'm just going to, she's one of my employee on payroll. She doesn't have a lot of time, unfortunately, because she's still in school, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, she's helping me with social media, my email list, my lead magnets, um, you know, those three things mainly. That's, which is awesome. And my yeah. social media marketing campaign too. She helps me build posts. So she's, yeah, she's an employee of mine now. She works part-time. Her where name is find, Where'd you find her? Okay, so here's a tip. <laughs> okay, so I got, she didn't, she didn't have that knowledge when she started. I trained her, uh-huh. okay? But she was a, she was an intern actually in a, she was doing a college degree on, to become an admin assistant. Mm-hmm. And so I had her for 10, 10 free days of work full-time, free of charge. As an intern, yeah. Yeah, that for was great. Program. And she, yeah. yeah, and it, it turned out it was such a perfect 
match with me and she was picking up new technologies so quickly. She used to be the admin assistant for Nokia in China. (laughs) That tells you her level of professionalism is like off limit, (laughs) you know? So I'm like, I can't do without you. Like, please let me hire you part-time, you know? And and so she stayed with me since then. So is she open to other opportunities or do you have her pretty well booked up? Well, I have her pretty well booked up right now. Yeah. Eventually she'll finish and she'll be, you know, it's hoping eventually I can get her full time. (laughs) I'm going to have to have pretty good launches for this. Um, But uh, once she graduates in June, uh, because she does also an accounting program. (laughs) <laughs> so mm-hmm. once she uh she graduates in june it's going to open up her her opportunities she's not looking to work for different employers but for one employer with different clients that would be okay so yeah she's looking more for full-time um if you're looking for a va before that there is also i I'm aware of a company who actually matches a VA with you and you can buy a package, you know, and it all depends of your resources, you know, but, uh, and, and then you get someone who's actually more specialized in one field. Yeah. I went so, on to Fiverr the other day, cause I know I need to pull the trigger on this and I just, yeah. um, I, I need to pull the trigger and just, hire someone so that's one of my goals today although I'm slammed so yeah (laughs) that's good yeah hiring a help is what can actually unlock the growth of your business like without that there's no like the growth is limited right Mm -hmm. well yes probably it is (laughs) there was was a good saying I I can't remember but um, about that you know I think Probably one of you said it. It's like when you go alone or go with the group, it's it's a it's a very popular saying with the business people. Right, like go far, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. With the uh-huh. with the group, you go pretty far. And I have to say that um, having help, it's tremendous because the lady that I hired that right now she's working only three hours a week for me. Her first thing was just to get all my blog posts, 120, some 130 blog posts from my website, put them into um, Google Docs and then file them. And then she created a sheet, Google sheet. And thank God she did because after I updated my WordPress and all the plugins, somehow my latest blog post got all messed up on my website and I'm like holy crap and I don't of course I'm like I have no idea what I wrote and thank god I went and I'm like please hope you didn't start from the end coming forward you started from the beginning going back and there was my blog post that she saved it so I went and I you know copied and paste copied and paste and within literally five minutes I had my blog post back so wow. yes i'm very grateful to the help we get so mm-hmm. let's continue going around so that everybody else can check in and i would really uh recommend i'm also looking into finding uh help that as we go through the process and have more ideas that you bring it to the group and share with us what you're doing if you have any specific places for us to look by all means helene if you could put that information in the chat that would be great so all right, I'm going to go next. Um, I have three more interviews this week, which will be for a total of nine. I have a whole bunch of people that are interested. Um, and I also have an event coming up, which I think I mentioned to you. I think I sent you messages about if you didn't get it, then you can let me can let me know if you're interested and I can. OK, I'm sorry. Um, this coming Sunday, um, I am hosting a co-hosting an event, which is a meet and greet open house of the, the Women's Empowerment Book Club, 
I've been co-running a book club for the last year and some months. And what we do is we select a book that is both inspiring and with a spiritual orientation. Um, and we're going to be reading a book called, if I could find it, I will tell you, um, Professional Troublemaker, The Fear Fighter's Manual, which is a kick-ass title. Yeah. And um, anyway, what we're doing is we're having a gathering of women. Anybody who's interested in coming, the book club is free. This meeting is free. It's just a matter of, you know, it's an, an opportunity for people to get together and to... Um, to talk about certain aspects of the book, we're going to be reading some excerpts and talking about it, and then people will get a chance to meet other women in the group. Um, the program itself, the club itself meets twice a month, it's on Zoom, and um, so I'm excited about that. And um, looking for um, a way to expand the group and have it as an additional way to um, Hain and Mala. As, as a way to, um, to meet people and to connect with other like-minded women. And if anyone in the group is interested in finding out about what I'm doing, that will be a place I will share that as well. So that's the first part. The second part is that I am thinking of going for a rather, what I think is a rather big program. I have to see. I am um, working on a pilot through Danny Eni's course uh, launch my course and it's going well going well um, he's making it really simple and there's part there are parts of me that are resisting doing it the simplest possible way um, because there's no social media involved and there's not even a sales page involved which I just found yesterday I was astonished that he's not even saying use a sales page although the coach who does the weekly calls with us said, if you want to do a sales page, you can. So I'm not really sure exactly how that's going to work because with everything we've been talking about and everything I've been learning over, you know, the last year and some months, that's always been the way you go at the very minimum. You have a sales page and you have a PayPal button and if you don't do anything with a cart, that's how you do it. So I have to see how that goes. Um, trying to follow his model, you know, they're saying, oh, it's very simple and um, I don't know. I was thinking of charging more for the program that they're than they're recommending for the highest price because I've charged more for it before and it's well worth what I charged before. So, um, but they're saying, you know, if this is, if you can do this and then get more people involved, then you have a larger group. I haven't really focused on building my list. So I'm not, necessarily focusing on pulling from um, people that I know on social media. I'm mainly talking to people that I know already. So um, that is in process. Um, we will see. I think I should be finishing up with my interviews largely next week. And then I have to do my um, compilation of data, which is a very interesting process. What they're recommending <clears throat> They gave us a spreadsheet. I'm not a spreadsheet kind of girl. I'm just not. I probably should learn how to be, but I'm not. And so instead of doing a spreadsheet, I'm going to do a gigantic, gigantic mind map. I have some of those really huge tear off post-it um, flip charts, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put it on the wall and I'm going to take small post-its and put different themes that have come up in my interviews on the wall. And then in, under each one, I'm going to make note of who said they felt it was something that they wanted to have in a course, and then take a look and see from there, you know, exactly what to do. Um, it's going to be a good amount of work, but I think it'll be really helpful in, in honing in on, on what it is that I want to do. So that's second. Thing. Third thing is, there's a group, there's a, there are two people who do a program online called the, the um, it's called crushing it on camera and it's all about being on yeah. video mm -hmm. and it's all about doing video for everything in your business. Mm -hmm. There are people, they are both actors and writers. They've been in Hollywood for years. They have both been in front and behind the camera and they teach you how to be really professional on camera. I mean, mm -hmm. I like being on, I like being on video. I am relatively comfortable with it, but 
when I'm in a meeting, it's a different story than when I'm sitting in front of the camera trying to figure out, are my eyes in the right place to look the best when I'm doing video? I mean, I try very hard. My camera, I have a separate camera on top of my computer and it sits there. And when I look at my camera, you see the way I look? I look at my camera and I'm looking up and I, I look like something seriously wrong with me. <laughs> so the I'm, I'm at- just kicked in. What'd you say? Your medications just my kicked med in. That's right. My meds yeah. just kicked in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm going to be talking with someone from that company today uh, and find out what this program is. I don't know. It could be a very expensive program. And my um, accountant told me uh, recently that I better find some more uh, deductions this year. Otherwise, I'm going to be hit with a big tax bill next year. So I'm thinking, hey, I'd rather spend it on a program than, yeah. you know, have to pay the taxes. So. Anyway, I'll let you know about that. He's, they, sound, they sound like really professional. What they do is they teach you all the basics about video and they teach you about equipment. They teach you about Instagram. They teach you about Facebook. They teach you about every kind of application that you would need it for and also using it for creating your own professional looking courses. So here it is. I have way too much to do and I'm thinking of taking on something else that's gonna give me even more to do. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens when I speak to him. So anyway, there you go. that's what's going on with me. I can go. Um, so I have a couple of things from this week. So I did my third Facebook Live. That went okay. Um, I have a, a disc training session tomorrow down in Red Deer. And my it's for one of my friends that I know through another board. And she's the president of a, a museum and art gallery in Red Deer. And she's then she messaged me last week. She's like, I don't know that we have a room. We might have to go virtual. I'm like, no, 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 no. I am charging you almost nothing for travel. We have to do this in person because I just cannot do this across computer screen. But I've been working this week. And so uh, the other night I made um, name takes because I don't know who any of these people are. So on the front side is their name and their disc diamond. So, you, so when they're sitting there together, they all know like they can pick it. And on the back is a summary of the four disc profiles and who on their um, team is each profile. So as they look at that, they can keep in mind how they can adapt their communication to, to the other people. So um, I was really excited about that. It took me like forever. And then I had meetings with, I really like a, a concept called story brand. So there's a book out there and it's about how to build your messaging around story, which I really like. So I've been struggling with my messaging. So I contacted a bunch of them this week and oh, hi, Rick. And then had three meetings, and I think I have one that I'm going to go with. So um, that's that's really good. It's really hard because it's expensive. That stuff is ex expensive to do. So um, just pulling the trigger on that, but I think it will give me a lot of uh, a lot of clarity. So um, yeah, that's been um, my week, like in a minute and a half or less. Uh, Jackie, before I forget, if you're going to do Story Brand, because I started with Story Brand, but I haven't, you know how you can go on their website and you can actually create yeah. your whole things. If any of you wants to like do that and work together, I'm totally in. Oh, yeah. Um, Honey, um, we can totally do that. I'm going to like, I looked up and I had some meetings and I've been doing like one, one chapter a week. I'm like, okay, I have the problem. I have, the, you know, the but I'm just, I have a bit of a, a bit of a mind mess with it because I'm like, okay, do I do the leadership? Do I do this? How do I make it all talk to each other? And Whenever, it's no rush, yes. but if anyone wants to just kind of keep each other accountable and say, okay, yeah. we're going to do, put some stuff on the story brand website because it's free. They, you know, they give you that stuff to do for free on their site. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm totally in. Yeah, no, I do. I think I'm going to pay somebody and she'll give me, She'll do my story brand and she'll wireframe my website. So it's in the order and she'll give me the exact copy. Um, so she'll take the, the story brand and put it into a copy for me. Give me my keywords, my one liner, my elevator pitch. I'm like, and I've been struggling with all that. So I'm like, I think it's time to just bite the bullet. And my one friend's like, oh no, you can totally do this. I'm like, I probably could, but I'm going to spend so much time and I'm in a bit of a mind fuck with it. So, um, but yeah, there will be, I'm going to end up doing more of them. So I think I'll hopefully be able to do the rest on my own. Because it's not super cheap, but yeah, I'd love to do that. I really, I really liked it. I just read Marketing Made Simple, which he walks through the, each step. It's it's quite good. I really like him. He also has a free 
course that you can take. It's over 60 days. He sends you a video each day. It's called Business Made Simple. And it's like an element of business. It's really good. I bought the book so I could follow along because I'm a visual learner. And so, but his videos are very similar to what you read, but um, it's really good. And he's, he's not, he's not bad. I, I kind of like him. I'll go next. Um, I finally messaged my two people that responded in my Facebook group about my language exchange um, course that I want to create. So I'm trying to set up validation calls with them, hopefully next week if they respond. And I reached out to by email to my, my two former colleagues that I um, created Language Exchange JH um, for our community language exchange program. So we're gonna meet sometime after Thanksgiving. And my objective is kind of see what they can offer me to get access to what we use, what I had access to before in exchange for possibly like a percentage of the course proceeds because I really wanted my business to give back. And also, I don't know who in my former teaching position did my role as part of the language exchange program. So they may need some help. Um, so I don't know what their status is. And I found out yesterday that maybe Annie might have some insight but I was using MailerLite and Thinkific and they don't mesh together directly. So you have to use Zapier and that just seems like a headache to me. So I might move to Kartra because it's all there and that like the hundred dollars a month might give me a motivation to actually get things done. So that's where I'm at with that. And I'm just, I watched a few, um, I think it's, um, I think Nirmala had, or someone had mentioned a YouTube channel about Canva. Um, so I watched a few of their um, videos on using Canva for YouTube. So I'm working on creating the like the intro and then some slides. I figured out my um, talking to the other Jackie that's not here. I talked to her last week of what my video was going to be about. It, it's kind of an introductory um, a video I want to share in my first email back to my group to re-engage them. And I want to produce a YouTube video each week on technology in the ESL classroom. And so I had talked to her about like Chrome Pro profiles and Google accounts, and she had no clue like exactly what they were. So I'm going very basic. I have five questions I wanna answer in my video. And so I'm gonna make a, um, basically a question slide or a title slide throughout the video for each question and target those. I had initially used like a Canva presentation and I was gonna have that and then show people. But I think usually when you watch um, videos on YouTube, kind of like a, something pops up, like a topic at the bottom of the screen. So I might do something like that. Sounds ambitious. Good luck with it. It's been on my list for like four weeks now. So got to get it done. <laughs> well, you started already. So that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. These meetings are my motivation because I, and I also met with uh, another girl that I met on some group in um, LinkedIn. So she's doing a YouTube channel as well. So we're kind of connecting on a weekly basis now. So that's good. Great. Okay, I guess I should go next. Good morning, everyone. So I had an early morning start, just got my tires changed over. And while I was doing that, it started to snow. Mm -hmm. So it's already piling up on this end already. Um, last week, I mentioned this week that I was going to work on content and I am having a really good time doing that. So the course name that I finally decided on, it's going to be your roadmap to self-discovery or your journey to self-discovery. And I need you guys to let me know what mm -hmm. roadmap or journey, which would be more enticing to you? 
I, I have a thought about that. Roadmap implies a kind of a concrete, specific set of things, and journey is a process that comes to mind. And my guess is, what's the audience uh, disc profile, possibly, or temperament, or whatever, that you're working to appeal to uh, with your language? That's just a thought that comes to mind. So, so it is concrete, step by step. Okay. So it should be roadmap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will, I'm working on the, the framework and I'm enjoying it because I'm finding that I'm discovering myself in the process as well and coming up with more ideas of what women with negative self-talk and limiting beliefs, you know, their journey mentally, because it's all internal. So it's more of a challenging thing where how when Amy say, you tell a story and you have to tie it back to your ICA. So you don't want to go too much more into yourself. So basically you're not sharing too much of your information just yet, but just enough to create a point. And I'm also doing the Tinkerific um, mini course where they say, if you're doing the cohort based one, it should be just one topic that's going to create transformation. So that helps me to not go too in-depth and kind of maybe scare my ICAs away. So putting the content together has been a journey and that has been taking up most of my time this week. Nice, thank you. Do you have an idea for a subtitle for that? Because it's a it's a lovely title, um, would be helpful to kind of hone in on the specifics of what it is that you're delivering. The first one, I think the subtitle is what, um, I have a couple subtitles and it's which would be the most simplest in order for you to start discovering yourself because you're doing internal work, right? So it's like, I'm trying to get them to start looking within to find the strength within. So finding your power or igniting that intuitive from inside. So that's lovely. It's also very vague. I'm being very open because I know that I- And I appreciate that. You know? Because you know how you would have finding your courage? I want to have women starting to be assertive, but not to, to get something from someone, not to get somewhere assertive, by objectively looking at yourself. So I am trying to decide what's the name of that um, mindset that I'm trying to accomplish at the end of my program. What first step are they taking in order to start to begin to start looking at themselves objectively? Because most of our issues begin inside of us and started at, during our upbringing, right? So it's something like going back to your roots to find out Connecting the dot backwards is the first subtitle that I had for that. But then again, connecting the dot in what sense, right? Mm -hmm. So I am having a bit of a challenge when it comes to the subtitle. Yeah. I think it depends on what it is that, that your market wants. I mean, I think it's really important, obviously, to be clear and specific in the title. I think when you're dealing with stuff that's not that's intangible um it's harder to define it and i know that i've been dealing with this for myself for quite a while um have you done any interviews have you done any inter uh, research to find out what people would want no i haven't because i was of the notion that if i put my course of, or my upcoming course out there and I get the response of what people um, would, are interested in and I can start booking that discovery call because I'm thinking even if I am not sure, just by putting it out there and finding out specifically, it will start a conversation basically. Mm -hmm. That's what my posting is. One of my posting for this week will be mindset and motivation. And I'm hoping that starts a conversation that will get my ICAs more um, open to me. Like I know where they are. Right now, I don't even know where they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
May I so make a suggestion? At ground zero? May I make a suggestion that worked pretty Please. well for me? Okay, so I had three ideas of courses, okay? And kind of a rough draft of titles. And so I presented, I, I basically did a, a poll, you know, on both Facebook and Instagram, which is where my ICAs are. And I asked people which course, which digital course topic would suit them the best, would meet their needs the best. And then I compiled who answered on what platform and I offered those people, like I started engaging with them and then I offered them if they wanted to do a, a course validation call with me. You so know, you gave but them three topics. I give them three top topics, yes. So now I have a pool of people that are interested in topic two and three, which I haven't, I haven't made any discovery calls with those ones because I know I want to focus on the first course. Okay. But I was able to book like nine, I think it was nine course validation calls with the people who answered the first topic the title was very clear though like there is still some little confusion about you know what this course could be used for with some of my ICAs but most of them they see the title and they're, they're like okay I know what this is about roughly you know okay. yeah so that was a good start. And there are other ways that I found my ICAs too. It was um, the people that seemed to want everything I had to offer, <laughs> like people who consumed a lot of my content online, people who contacted me and they were like, can you help me out with this problem? Or, you know, like, I would love to know how much you would charge. And, you know, I, I offered them a free 20 minutes uh, gardening consultation with me. And after this consultation, I was like, okay, this person's definitely my ICA, you know, like they're ready and willing to invest money and time to learn to grow their own food, you know? So I offer them a validation call as well. Okay. Hermalo, are you on social media? I haven't been for the longest while. So that may not be a, a way of finding people because I mean, I, I do that's... have Instagram that I would um, interact periodically. Mm -hmm. And I've been actually just banking my posting because I want to do that. I'm doing the content for three months so I can start putting them out there. And I still have people engaging, even though I haven't been engaging, you know, commenting that they like what um, I have and the information and they want to hear more. Um, and my... My three topics, they need, they need more thought because if you were to say, to say to someone, finding your mindfulness, they wouldn't know what I'm trying to, to talk about. And if I say, looking within to confront your fear, that is too vague as well. So it's not how, what I understand, but it's what my ICA would understand. So it's like dumbing it down a little bit well, so what about to going on to Instagram and asking these people if you'd like, if they'd like to get on a call with you and just tell them you're creating, you know, a course, you'd like to ask if they'd be willing to help you to uh, talk about some of these things, depending yeah, on how you want to focus. My obstacles I have to overcome, putting myself out there and actually putting a video I've done the video a couple of times and I've deleted it because I don't like it. So I think <laughs> I've been trying to do that and I haven't been able to overcome actually posting that video. Well, maybe that's the place for you to start right now is to put that up. Right, oh Aline? You just gotta, we are all terrified, honestly. Like we, it, <laughs> Yeah, not All you, not you. No, no, I was. Oh not my you God, like sure. I had anxiety oh for half a day before every video, you know, literally. And then re-watching and like criticizing myself about everything, you know. Yeah. But the thing is that we all go through that. But at some point you have to make a, you have to make a decision. Is this going to stall you or is, are you going to do it anyway? Despite the paralyzing fear. 
That's really what it, it ends up being. Mine. We're all super scared. We yeah. all are. I think part of the, I think part of the challenge is to not assume you know what they need and then try to convince them this is what they should yes. do because that's the biggest problem because what happens is as Danny says, the, the head of my program, we go into our bat cave and we, we create something remarkable and brilliant. And then we come out and we say, why wouldn't they want to buy it? And then we put it out there. And if it's not necessarily what they're looking for, we're not going to get customers. Oh, it, like you don't launch a course without courage. Huh? And we're going to be even more discouraged. Yeah, but you, right. you'll see the more you do validation, like course validation meetings and calls, the more you're going to understand what they want, what's the language they use, and that you're going to use that for your copy. You're going to use that to build your course. You don't build your course until you sell it. That's what the guy in Tinkerific was saying. You know, why yeah. you spend blood, sweat, and effort if you don't know that's what they want, right? Right. No, exactly. I mean, there's some of my ICAs, you know, like on the validation call, I had never met them before. Okay. And I met them and it was like magic happened. They were like, I've been looking for a course like this and every door I knock at, you know, they, they tell me it's not really a good fit. That's not what they offer. And I'm like, listen, in a few weeks from now, I'm going to launch a founding member <laughs> pre-sell and you can become a founding member and have 50% off and I will design the course for you. And mm -hmm. she was like, oh, here's my credit card. <laughs> you know, that's an incredible uh, confidence booster. Yeah. It is so worth going through the, the pain, uh, like the growing pain of, you know, going on wherever your ICA is, if it's social media or if it's a, they're reading the newspaper or they're listening to their radio, you go where they are and you engage with them on a regular basis. So they start trusting you mm -hmm. and they start seeing you as an expert. Because mm -hmm. if they don't hear from you, they don't know who you are. You don't know what you can yeah, do. They don't, know they don't see you as an expert. Like, why would they give you money for a course? Right. So I just want to give you feedback and then I would like us to, to, to keep moving so other people are able to share also. But I think you come across great on camera. You and I have done one-on-ones on Zoom. You have a great presence when you talk about what it is you want to, what you want to share with people. You have mm -hmm. passion, you have conviction, and you do come across with confidence. So you got to look find at the videos that I do and I don't see any of that. That's the thing. I don't know why, but I look at the videos over and over and I finally I decide, forget it. It's not working. Okay. Mm. It's my limiting self-belief again, you know? Uh, a mind, a mind trick on that and looking at videos and yourself, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't is no matter what you see is you, we force ourselves to say, what do I like about this? Not what I don't like, that's easy. What do I like? What do I like? And start picking up the things that you like about it to bring that back to, oh, now I can do a little more of that. Forget about what I don't like because I can find what I don't like forever. Wow. How about finding what you do like and emphasizing that and seeing what that does? with what Joan is talking about, the energy, the passion, your commitment to the subject and your knowledge of the subject. When that comes through, you can, my guess is you can find a lot of things that you like. That sounds so good. One of the what? things that I do every morning is part of my journaling is what did I do that worked yesterday or that I can be proud of? Yeah. yeah. And so when Tuesday, when I thought it went off the rails and like something happened and it derailed the whole day and then I'm like, I got nothing done and whatever. And I journaled the next day. I'm like, you know what? I went to bed on time and I drank my water and I actually, I answered yeah. five emails, which, you know, considering my emails are breeding, like, you know, uncontrolled bacteria in my inbox, like whatever ones I can get rid of are, are, are great. <laughs> right. And so but it was just a day that I thought I did nothing right through. I actually had eight or 10 things and it, some of them were small, but it, it creates that cycle of, mm -hmm you know, like what exactly what Jim was saying. Yeah. That sounds good. 
there's another trick and I, uh, also in terms of getting up in the morning, with, uh, building on what Jackie is saying, you ask yourself four questions. One is, what are you looking forward to? Second is, what are you excited about? Third is, what are you proudest of about yourself? And fourth is, where is love in my life? And every time you ask that question, you take in the feeling of it. And if your mind says, nothing, you say, well, that's okay. You might not be excited. But if you could be excited, what would you feel? So it's another, these are kind of mind hacks for this kind for self-esteem stuff. Wow. I like that. Could you I send stole that it out from, to us? Sure. Could you send I, that out I, to us? Yeah, I can. I stole it from Tony Robbins. It's not mine. Tony <laughs> Robbins. He, he, he is one of my, uh, he's a teacher. So <laughs> yes, I will send that out. Yeah. You can See why it. I like this group? You can do it. I know you can. Here's Thank the thing. You. Here's You're welcome. Here's the, the interesting thing. So much of what we want to do, we are each capable of doing. If we don't know how to do it, we're capable of learning. And once we learn, we are capable of doing it. It's just that we've got to figure out how to get those limiting beliefs out of the way so that we don't stop ourselves from trying. Right? Agreed. I also read a quote, I just did my blog about it, but it was basically around what if we accepted that we will fail and all we do is try and fail better is based on a series of Samuel Beckett quotes. It's like, do it this time, next time just fail a little better. And it came out of, like I, I first saw it in Michael and May Stanier's like the coaching habit book. But it was just like, what if I accept that I'm not going to be super great at this the first time? And that next time I'm just going to be just to, even just a fraction of a bit better. And we do it all the time with kids. We don't expect that kids that can't read letters in October um, have failed. We'd say, well, we just need a little bit more practice. And there's been a huge mind shift in education around that, around redoing things. And, you know, people are like, well, you know, you can't redo a test. It's not like that in the real world. I'm like, well, I don't know how many people failed their driver's test and they got to take it again. You know, it's not one and done, right? It does actually exist like that in the world, despite what some people think. We, we do practice. We send people up in... Um, simulated airplanes lots before we let them go do major maneuvers right and so what, what those kind of things I think but it is like it's hard but it's, it's around that mindset mindset shift so that was my that was my blog this week around um, around fear and what if we could reframe it so I don't know if that's helpful one of the things that I often say to people is the following first of all you can never get it it's very rare that you get it right the first time, especially with something new. That's remarkable that you if you could do that. The learning process is a creative process. And it's about trying things to see what works. So when you try something to see if it works, and then you discover, nah, that didn't work, we could call it a mistake. We could call it a failure. I would prefer not to use that word. Because here's the thing, I believe the only way you fail is if you stop trying. You know, yes, sure. you try something, you see if it works. And it when it does, if it doesn't, you say to yourself, oh, that's good information. Now I know not to do that again. Now I need now I know I need to try something else and then just shift and shift and shift. And that's how anything that was ever created came into being because people didn't give up and they just kept trying and kept trying and kept trying. So you can do it. I can. And you will do it at some point. Because you want to, right? That's right. So gentlemen, who would like to go next? Let us know how you doing. I'm just. Oh, thank you.
Okay, my turn, I guess. Sorry I'm late. <clears throat> this week has been an eye-opener for me. Um, I've been unusually active out there and got no new subscribers. And then an old friend of mine contacted me. Uh, he does uh, three, four, four presentations a week. Um, he used to do them in front of live audiences. Now he does them on Zoom. <clears throat> and I said, what am I doing wrong? And he said, I'll tell you. We had a long phone call. <clears throat> Basically, um, I, I have a huge following on social media. But my huge following is as the artist Rick Allen. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows me as a writer, mm -hmm. and nobody's re reacting to what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so he told me I've got two problems. One, I must recreate myself in public. And also, I need, need to be clearer. I need to relieve the fear. I'm, I'm telling people that I'm writing a book and I want you to come along with me on the adventure and we'll go step by step. And his first comment was, nobody really wants to write a book. They don't want the pain. They would like to learn how to write a book. They would like to, they would like to have that adventure, the, the, the mind adventure, but they don't want to sit down every week and write like they would be required to do so. The idea is I'm not writing, I am not selling, not supposed to be selling um, this newsletter course to write a book and publish a book. What I'm supposed to be selling is we're going to have some fun writing stories. That's a lot less threatening. People will relate to that more than we're going to write a book. And so um, I have a meeting with him on Monday and we're going to sit down and the first thing I'm going to do is open a YouTube channel. Yes, I don't like cameras either. I'm terrified of cameras. Uh, I don't know why. I used to have a TV show and I was the host. But really? Now I don't like cameras. But um, I'm, I'm not a 20 something or a 30 something anymore. So I'm going to do a YouTube and I'm going to explain my face, my voice, that what I'm doing is building a course. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to write your story. And I'm going to tell a story, one of my stories. Um, if you want to read it, it's on medium, but it, it's simply relating your experience and how others have perceived it. That's it. And it, I'm simplifying the whole process. We're not going to write a book. We're going to tell a story. Much easier, much easier to, to accept. Uh, and yes, I am rewriting my, my uh, book on my PDF on journaling. And I'm rewriting my emails because they're they're a little harsh. They're they're not personal. They're not friendly. And I need I need to get friendly. Uh, I in real life, IRL, I am friendly. I think. <laughs> I I have more than more than a handful of friends, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bite the bullet, go to YouTube, open a channel, and sit down and record my story and why I can help people. Because this, this, this fear thing is present in everyone. I'm listening today, and we all have it. If, if we don't have it now, we had it a couple of weeks ago. 
So we're overcoming it. It can be overcome. So that, that's basically the message I'm going to try to get out in the next, next two weeks. We will see how that works. And I, want, thank I, wonder you. What, I wonder what would happen if you focused on the power of story, what storytelling does and what the, what the impact is for people when they can tell their story. Because, I mean, you, you certainly have some, you know, really lovely stories. I've read several of them, really like them in general. And, you know, to engage them somehow in what it is about storytelling that's so compelling. Why is it such an important part of our way of connecting in relationships is sharing who we are. That's kind of what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? Yeah, I'll have to research that. I've, I've always told stories. So I, I just assume that everybody tells stories. Mm -hmm. uh, but I no. don't know. No. no. Not necessarily. <clears throat> hmm. I mean, one thing that comes to mind is if you wanted, may not be what you're interested in, but you could look up different uh, cultures and what storytelling, the, the, the importance and the role that storytelling has played in, in different cultures. Hmm. You know, what, what, it, yeah. what it does and how it brings people together and how it helps people to feel empowered to tell their story and have someone listen, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Okay, yeah. The, I'm, I'm looking every day at, at <clears throat> the changing culture. Um, I, the, Jim and I grew up in a time when we used to tell stories. That's the way we entertained ourselves. We, we didn't have 24-7 uh, news. We didn't have uh, <laughs> television programs, uh, we told stories. Uh, I, I grew up listening to radio because there yep. was no television. The Lone Ranger. That's right. Yes, exactly. Sky King. Lash LaRue. Lash but LaRue. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Nobody knows those people. <laughs> Those I know shows. the first two, but I never they heard of Lash LaRue, but that's Lash a great LaRue. name. Yeah. Lash LaRue. Lash LaRue. Cowboy yeah. with a whip. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I, in, in the modern age, that's our storyteller right there. Yeah. And, well, we can't see it. It's a phone. Yeah. So we have to replace that because life is not as rich. Life is not fleshed out it's not full today because people don't tell stories they don't interact that that's the word interact mm -hmm. we, we don't truly engage mm -hmm. and that's a real challenge and i know it's been a real challenge for me for so, do, do, doing social media and learning how to use video as a way to connect with people i'm I've been doing video for quite a while now since I started working with patients online last year, but I'm not familiar with how to use it to engage because I like being with somebody in person and talking to them. And if you told me last March that we were going to have this amazing group of people and really get to know each other and become friends with so many people we've never personally met, I would have said, how would that be possible? That's a you know, story it was hard to imagine. Yeah. That, that yeah, would yeah. be yeah exactly so i think i think one of the challenges rick and i know that i have this challenge also is figuring out how to engage in a different form than you're used to and how to find your way to the place where it feels like it works for you mm -hmm. and i think that's a challenge for so many of us you know mm -hmm. yes you know, what strikes me about stories, too, uh, is that we're neurobiologically predisposed to creating and telling stories, that there is a biological dimension and connection 
that we're talking about um, that does connect us. And I'm thinking of some workshops that we do, uh, Joan and I have done together, where one of the most powerful things that happens in connecting people is where people have a chance just to get tell a little bit about their story. And you can see the sh when people go into their story rather than their ideas, mm -hmm. that people's uh, eyes well up, you can see them move forward and you can see them connect. And when, when they tell their story and are touched through the telling of their story, they're engaged in it, they're feeling it, it's contagious. Yeah. So, and at least what we're seeing right now. So. Yeah. On, on Zoom, uh, I, I was invited by a total stranger to a story workshop. I have no idea why. This was before I made the announcement that I was going to write a book. And I got to tell a story to three pages of images. And so I told the story about how I learned to ride a bike. And I got to see people. I got to see their faces. They were tiny, but I got to see them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was heartwarming. It, it yeah. encouraged me to yeah. continue telling the story. Yeah. yeah. And I, I miss that. I really do. Mm -hmm. Find a way to create an event where you can invite people and have them talk about storytelling, share their stories, people you know. Set up a well, Zoom. You could that do that. Is, that is great. Yes. And whether or not you get on YouTube and feel comfortable with it, I mean, you could still do that with email. If you wanted to do a video and send people a video to invite them, you could do that also. But you have a huge list. You know, yeah. there are a lot of ways you can to do that, doing Zooms. That's true, yes. Yeah, I like that. Yep, set up a room to tell stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I will, I will assemble that this week. I will get the word out to you guys if you want to join me and tell stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> I guess it's my turn. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be back and be here. And part of the story I'm telling myself is that I uh, have not taken the course. Joan invited me because we have a history that's around some stories that I'll, I'll mention. And I'm so happy to be here. I am uh, uh, I'm in transition um, and getting ready to move to Portugal. So there's a lot of, lot of details that are going on that get away of my thinking about how do I want to show up. Um, and so but what I can relate to, though, and is something that I've been doing that it would be a, to use the language of, of the group here. I, I, think we're, I think what Joan and I do once a week when we're all together is a mastermind group. <laughs> we do, uh, um, I do a, uh, a weekly one, one and a half to one to one and a half hour storytelling session. Uh, it's based on uh, graduates of a program that we share at the, it's a yoga training center, Kripala. We teach people how to be facilitators and things like that. Our get together came. The story is when COVID came, we looked and sort of said, the people who come through the Kripala program, our heart chakra related folks, their mind body teachers, their somatic folks, their therapists. They do a lot of one on one or one to group work. And now there's none of that. What do we do? We're high touch people in a, in a what looks to be a low touch world, at least a second, uh, yeah, whatever, secluded world. We started talking about, and the story line was. So let's get together and talk about how we transition in this master. How do we transition from our high touch kind of work 
onto an online environment in a way that is as effective online as it was when we were in groups and teams and working with exercises and activities. And we start the conversation with a catch up on what's new, green and growing in your life. And that is where we begin to touch in on catching up with folks. And then a large part of it was how do you use Zoom? And how do you do breakout rooms and all of the technology that we had to learn about when we first got started? A couple of discoveries that relates to what Rick is talking about. One of the things that we have found is that there is a magic to this Zoom that creates the kind of connection that these folks want to create with their clients in breakout rooms. And when you frame the questions for the breakout rooms and the conversations in a way that evokes connection, then you get connection. And so those were, those were some of the th thoughts that I had about it. And Joan, what's your experience with it? Um, well, I'll tell you my story about Zoom. Um, when the pandemic was um, rearing its ugly head and we therapists got together, I'm in a study group with trauma treatment therapists. When we got together just at that, right at that time, I said to everybody, so what are you going to do? I mean, how are you going to handle this? They're telling us we can't be in person with one another. And people said, well, I'm trying this app, this platform, and I'm trying that platform. And someone said, oh, what? Well, you try Zoom. I tried Zoom the first day. I hated it. The second day, I hated it. And I said, there's no way on this earth I'm going to ever use this platform ever. <laughs> Two and a half days into it, I tried it, and I was able to figure out how to use it. And all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute, this could be interesting. <laughs> so that's my beginning with Zoom. Mm -hmm. And one of the many things that it reminds me of again and again is there are so many situations that have come up for me where I made an assumption because I had a technology challenge, I had a learning curve and thought it wasn't gonna work. I have found and not everybody feels this way, right? And everybody has the right to have their own experience of it. But I have found it to be a profoundly intimate way of getting to know people. Mm -hmm. Last April, I was invited to join a group of people that are part of a Buddhist Sangha out in Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, a very close friend of mine um, that I studied with at Kripalu. And we, we also were staff assistants for some of the big teachers there. Anyway. She said, you know, there are this, this great group of people. And then I told them about you. And they said, oh, they really want to meet you. I started going and we were doing it once a week until the warmer weather when we weren't seeing each other. I just saw them again the other day. These are good friends of mine. I have never laid eyes on in person. It's, it's a very powerful way to connect. It's not for everybody. I think the key in it is really finding ways to infuse what you're doing. And I know everyone here is looking to do this or doing it already. Infuse what you're doing with meaning, with opportunities for people to feel they're welcome, they're included, what they have to say is important, that you do something to engage people, right? I think that a key in a lot of the teaching online for me is when I teach, I do a combination of a whole bunch of different types of programs. And what I do is, I teach to engage and include and involve. So that it's not just you're coming to my course or you're coming to a class and you're going to listen to me and you're going to passively sit and then learn something and then I'm the expert and you're the learner. I don't believe in that. I've never believed in that. I think the key is to be able to bring what I have to the table for the people that I'm teaching, but then bring them into the conversation. And I think when you bring people into the conversation, you make them feel welcome, you make them feel like what they have to say matters, that it's okay to not be perfect, and that it's okay to be here. And not only that, we're glad you're here, because you're part of an important chemistry that we create together. So that's how I see it. You asked me a question, I gave yeah. you an answer. Yeah, uh, and um, 
as we look at you know, so I from my from what I've been working on that this mastermind group that I, I mentioned is one of the things that I've been most engaged with and we've been together since March of 2020. A couple of other things that we've discovered about it is that you can work with people in self esteem when you even with the little little uh, Brady bunch kinds of displays that we have you can uh, you can work with people in terms of how they're uh, how they're coming across and how they see themselves and provides some sort of feedback. And for, so anyway, so those we discovered a lot about that. And I've been working a lot with that. I do not have a, I, the other thing I'm doing is I'm a part, I think I mentioned before, a part of a team. Uh, five of us wrote a book called Designing and Leading Life-Changing Workshops. And um, we are now building uh, to put that as a, as a, a, a series a, a series of courses i'm not even sure the platform another person is working with the platform in detail so that's my engagement in the marketing and the online course kinds of things and my experience with working online with providing different kinds of uh, mastermind venues so that's what i've been up to and i'm sorry that i uh, i i and I will go back and I, I need to go back and get really schooled in the technology and the language that you all are working with in terms of platforms and, and what's going on. And so uh, I will be staying tuned and learning from you. And I will tell you that if it wasn't for Jimmy and the, the group that he formed, I wouldn't be, I would not have learned what I know, and I wouldn't have been able to develop the confidence to go on Zoom and do all the things that, that I'm doing now. Because one of the things that we do in the group, which is really very cool, is that people come in, it's been a while since we've done this, but people would come in week by week, guess what I learned? I learned you can do this on Zoom. Let's try it. And then we would, we would do an experiment with it to see how it worked and see if it didn't. So we were actually learning by doing, which was quite wonderful. Yeah, and, and as a part of it, that's that's neat. And as a part of it too, folks would say, "I want to come on. I've got this idea. I've got this idea about, uh, and I don't know if it's going to work or not. Can we use uh, an hour, an hour and a half to do that?" So we were able to respond to people's needs for a way to demo, as well as to demo what they've learned as well. So it really is, it's fun to do. It's a lot of fun to do. So I'm saying thank you. So I just put it in the chat, but I'm just going to say it also that I know we normally do breakouts and had initially thought we would move in that direction. It seemed like people had a lot of things they were um, wanting to share today. And because we were doing it together in a group, um, I just wanted to wait and see where it went. And we just ended up using the time we have. We have eight minutes left, so we can talk right. more now about whatever else you want to talk about. But we ended up, you know, just I, I ended up deciding not to break us up into groups. We'll, we'll go back to that next week. But um, I'm glad, Nirmala, that you talked about what you're dealing with. And I'm glad, Rick, not that I'm not glad about everybody else, but I'm glad Nirmal and Rick that you talked as much about what you're dealing with as, as you did, because that's important to ask for the help and to talk about the struggles and, you know, and, and get support around that. It's new for me actually opening up and talking because I just, I'm used to just writing and I have so much content, but listening to you guys, I realized that I'm not in this alone. Like you guys go through the same challenge and I'm learning from you guys that's why I look forward to this group so much I've actually told my manager I'm not working on Fridays because I need to be here <laughs> wow that's wonderful that's me so any challenges you want to throw out to the group that you need help with as we wrap up we have seven minutes left or anything else you want to share Jamie, are you with help. us? <laughs> what? I need I need help. Like I I tried to do I tried new technology this week to stream on 
Facebook and Instagram at the same time. And it failed so badly. <laughs> it was so bad. So I want to fix the problems, learn how to do it, and then do a test drive where I'm not actually, I haven't announced to the world that I'm going to be live <laughs> this time and then it fails. So I need to do a practice run. So if one of you, Annie, okay, great, thanks. You, I just need someone to, huh? you can Zoom right into Facebook Live. Yeah, but I want to stream on both Facebook and Instagram at once. I That's think the key. devices. Yeah, I, no, it, so I need, re, I have Restream and Yellow Duck. That's what I need to use. And, um, but it's just, it's new technology and I don't know how to use it well. So I need someone who would go on my face, like a, who would go on my Facebook account and tell me, yes, it's working. You are live. Write down some comments to see, to confirm I can see them. I'm happy to hear help. me, right? Huh? I'm happy to help. Okay, good. And same on my Instagram account. See if, if it's working. And then once I'm done, is does it post the videos, the final videos, without me having to do any extra step, you know? That's kind I'm of what I want to I'm off on the 24th. If you're doing it, we, a couple of us can go on just so that we see. We can well, I need to figure this out earlier than that. Like my next live is on Monday. Oh. I'm doing, yeah, I'm going live How about every Sunday. Monday. Huh? Sunday I'm available okay I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out the tech once I have figured out the tech I'll send a message to the the chat yes. group uh, list builder society and see who's on and when okay. I just need like one person who can confirm because we would like to experience that through you as well so we can learn yeah it. that'd be great because once I have that figured out I can do my first live successfully <laughs> on both platforms and I can teach any of you guys who would be interested i just thought it would be such a time saver especially when i start my runway for my digital course i don't want to have to do everything in double you know i want to be live often but not double both the work platforms. on both platforms it's just too much you know and then eventually i think with this same technology i can add other channels like youtube to it and linkedin you know so that's why I really want to master this. Colleen, can you put the name of that uh, platform on the yeah. chat? I want to check it out. Restream. And that oh, allows yeah. you to, I've heard of the restream. right? We've heard about it. So yeah. now I'm trying it. <laughs> so uh, Restream and you can, you depending on how much you pay, you can you know, broadcast to more channels, but to really be able to communicate and restream with Instagram, you need also yellow duck. That's free. It's free. So I've got the entry level restream. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between what one does and what the other does? Okay, so restream just doesn't have the permission to, to stream directly on Instagram. That's why you need yellow duck in addition to it. You need both. Mm -hmm. So Restream allows you to stream onto what platforms? A whole bunch of platforms. A whole bunch. A okay, whole but, bunch. But it's, in other words, but not Instagram, which is where Yellow Duck comes in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. The challenge will be hooking Restream and Yellow Duck together so you don't have to do anything extra there. I see. There are more challenges. I I I'm, I'm just guessing. <laughs> there were more challenges than that. Yeah. Just that. Yeah. yeah. There was no video. There was just an audio. <laughs> you know, so obviously I did Ooh. many things wrong. Oh. So I was just want to. Huh? Helene, was that the only platform that I, I know there are other platforms that allows you to stream to different, uh, you know, social media platforms? Oh, I'm sure they are. But you don't need like a secondary, like yellow duck or whatever. No. I don't know what okay, they are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look because I know I've heard that. Okay. They were, that, this actually was uh, suggested to us by uh, the gentleman from India who comes to, to this group. You teach. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. He suggested that. So I'm like, okay, let's try it, you know. And have like, you set up your posting to be previewed before you post it because why okay was... so that's different like okay. all 
I can, I can pre-schedule a lot of my posts, but this is for live videos, live streaming, live streaming, because when you launch a digital course and you're on multiple platforms, you don't want to have to, you know, do a live on one platform and, and then, then you repeat it on another one and you you know like it's like you're pulling your hair out especially during the runway i've seen my accountability partner do her runway like the to lead to her webinar it is intense like she was live every day wow. you know like can you imagine doubling this you need to stay yeah. sane so this is a piece of technology that I was willing to pay for to simplify my life especially how I'm gonna have a newborn like any <laughs> any second <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be nursing and then live on video you know <laughs> like so it, sometimes you need to bite the bullet and invest in the technology but I just have to figure out how it works properly and hopefully we figure that out this Sunday yeah, I'll work on it today. And then, you know, if it's, I'm not going to split my hair for next week, if it doesn't work, and I need more time. But by the end of next week, I will have, I, I will have this nailed down, you know, and I've done a successful okay. live on both platforms. That's what I want. So we you have every faith, we have every faith that you will do it because you always figure it out. Yeah. Well, um, and when you do, for those of us who, who are ready to take that step to do streaming, I'm sure that that information will be helpful. I just want to remind everybody, we're all at a different level. And if you're starting out and relatively new, what Helene is doing is not where you're at. And that's okay, because everybody has to find their own way into this that works. It's not always going to be the same journey. So, you know, I know that one of the things that's been a challenge for me is that I sometimes have been in different um, groups and um, programs with people who are way ahead of me. And I'm like, oh, my God, how am I going to catch up? What am I going to do? I got to get, you know, you really have to try and trust your own instinct as to what feels like the right place for you to enter and connect with your market. Mm -hmm. And it could be what she's doing. I certainly know, I know for myself, I'm nowhere near there yet, and that's okay. But also I really respect and admire, and I'm incredulously amazed by what you do every day and how much you do. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see if it works. No, we'll make it work. It'll work. So we've come to the end of our time and I just want to thank everybody for coming again and keep up the good work. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Same bad time and same bad channel. I'm dating <laughs> myself, but that's okay. <laughs> Bye now. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye -bye. thank you.